Kevin here with me. We are, well, we were perch fishing and walleye fishing, and now we've decided to switch to burbot. Yep. So we had an accident, Seth accidentally got into some burbot, so. So we're gonna keep it going. <laughs> uh, we're gonna drink some Bud Lights. We got some pizza from the gas station. <laughs> some or, pizza? Like six. <laughs> six pizzas. Guys up here, uh, a trip that happens every year. All pretty much good guys, a couple of them not, but most of them are good. And uh, we're going to try and get some bourbon action, and let's go meet the guys, and we'll see what we've caught so far. All right, so this is a trip that happens every year with a great group of guys. Uh, we head up to Indian River, Michigan, and we generally are fishing walleye and perch. And this year we decided to do a little burbot fishing, and we found some and really got into them. Now, a couple of the guys uh, got a little confident in their fishing and uh, decided that they would make a claim if we caught more than 40 that they would do a burbot bath, which is something I'd never heard of before. But uh, as you can see from... Uh, from these catch pictures here, uh, we got a, a few more than 40, and here's just a little sneak peek of a burbot bath. Uh, I don't know how much fun uh, it really is, but you know what? Everybody has a good time on this trip, and uh, we look forward to it every year. So, if you want to see the rest of the burbot bath, you got to get to the end of the video here. Uh, hit that like button, hit subscribe. Thanks to Captain Chucks and Lightington Beverage Bud Light for sponsoring this video. Hope you enjoy Burbit Fishing in Indian River. Well, here's our setup. Now, of course, we got that one guy that always sets up next to you. <laughs> <laughs> He's not part of our group. Don't be that guy. But anyways, we got some burbot. You want to see him? Those aren't burbot. Those aren't burbot. <laughs> I think there's, there's a fish down there. Oh, oh, I see him. It is a burbot. Yeah, he just swam. Who's barely moving it right now? I'm not moving at all. Yeah, so he just swam right by yours. He is down. He was down there. Let's hit record him. I got a um. I don't know what to do. I oh, he's break. Uh, oh my God, he's. Oh, he's eating yours. He's eating yours. Oh, he's eating it. We missed him. Drop it back, drop it back. No, no, I get it, I get it. Oh, he is, he's going right to yours. Tap it on the bottom, he's right on the bottom. Catch you on the wall. Yeah, 38, 40. <laughs> hey, that's not even all. Fish on! Got one, huh? Yeah. Come in here. See so you can gap it. I'll gap it. Right, you can see Seth's got her coming up right now on the Garmin. This is the new Garmin uh, 73 CV. It's a right unit. I like it. Beautiful unit. Hopefully, gonna have pan optics. Ooh, we got our buddy, ooh. our buddy Colton. Nobody really knows much about him. He just shows up at camp every year. <laughs> You know, if you lost this fish, that'd be really embarrassing because you know it would make the footage. Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. Heel pout. Oh, nice looking one. Wow. <laughs> Good fish. That's a big one. Cheers, mates. That's how you do it. Just like that. Sounds like the bourbon slayer. Cheers, we're not, sir. We're not really sure. Oh. 
But I think this is like 17 for him. He said, if he catches 20, he's going to do the, the oh. burbot bath. I can't even <laughs> say it with a straight face. I'm not really sure what the burbot bath is, but we're all rooting for Seth to get three more. <laughs> all right, well, we'll see you soon. See Clown. Oh, you're putting a full minnow on it? Three. Three full minnows on it? <laughs> Wonderful. What's that? All right, so I'm just going to give you a little voice over here because uh, the conditions were extremely windy and we had tons of wind noise off and on throughout the video. And do apologize for that. Uh, Indian River, Michigan, apparently is one of the windiest places I have ever been. But uh, basically what we're doing here is we're set up on a flat just off of deep water. So it comes up to um, right around 50 foot. It falls off, I think, almost to 90 foot where we were at. Now, what we were using... Um, I was using a Fenwick medium action walleye jigging rod. Um, you probably could have used a, something a little bit heavier, but it seemed to do an adequate job and it was really fun to fight the fish on. Also, uh, I was using a 12 pound suffix 832 braid with a suffix fluorocarbon leader. Um, seemed to work very well. Uh, these fish don't seem to be extremely line shy, so you probably don't have to worry too much about the fluorocarbon. Um, our best spoons ended up being the medium and large size moonshine jigging spoons. Those are available at Captain Chuck's. Um, best colors we had were clown and crab face. Uh, seemed to catch most of the fish. Now, a lot of different uh, cadence styles of jigging. Some guys were j jigging aggressively and catching them. Some guys were uh, finessing and catching them that way. It did seem that a pause always seemed to trigger a bite. Uh, much like many fish. Is that a fish way up here, or is that you? Hold that, it's you. You're right below me. So there's fish right there now. Got him! Okay, have the GoPro. And, uh, you're gonna have to turn it on. Just hit the button on the top and start recording. Alright, got another one on. Oop, if you're pointed at you. And then gaff this for me, sir. Whoa. Whoa. Did not like the hole. I saw, saw a spoon down there. Adam, how'd that one feel? Broke my graph. Look at my graph, son. I didn't break your graph. It's pretty exciting. So you want to get out and cut some of these eel pouts. Oh, purple D's. That's one of my favorite walleye spoons. Look up Tom, look up Captain Chucks, get yourself some of these. It's purple D's does it again. Ready? Catch a lot of walleye. I think, we can, uh, I think we're about ready to catch another one. Let's go do it. Yeah. Let's hit that button on the top. Adam, they're they're everywhere. Fish on, oh, fish no, on. It's, it's not bigger. Still fish on. Fish on. Wow, we got a head thumper. I didn't know how to do that today. Maybe we'll get that spoon back. It's got a headache. Nah. All right, here Lake we go. trout. Lake trout. So that's got one coming in. On the clown again, right? Clown. Two or three minnows. Missed one bite earlier. Get yourself some moonshine jigging spoons for these burbot. There he is. Got him. Look at that thing. Woo! Come on, hold on more. Okay. Let's go. 
going on here? Yeah, we are pounding on moonshine jiggin' spoons. All in bourbon? Yeah, we have like 30 some now. There's like 10, 10 fish down there right now. No, no. Uh -uh. uh -uh. <clears throat> don't pull out juicer. Sure, sure do. Not a very big one. It's getting bigger. He's getting bigger. Got me. You got these hang on you? Yeah. Can gaff him, Raj? Gaff him? Yeah. Does he need gaffed? We can yeah, gaff everyone. Gaff him. Why? If you want to hand him? got a gaff. Why don't you just I get it. pull him up? Hey. Beg my pardon. Holy just shit. Just pull him up on the ice. Be a real man. Holy 18 inches. Whew. That's a good one. Hey, put that up. That's good. Moonshine Clown. Does it again. Does it again. Tell you what, he's putting on a show right now. I gotta go get me one of those clowns. Sometimes we are clowns, huh? Just talk. Are you serious? Hooked up again! Ooh, this is heavy. You said that last time. Do you want to pull the deuces? Yeah. Alright, we got a good one going. Let's get the. Oh, yeah, that is heavy, isn't it? Oh, he's not jumping this time. You can't move it. You can't move it. No, I'm just give it out. Alright, Seth is showing us a big one, I guess, but I'm kind of thinking that it's probably just a small one. He's just putting on a shelf for the camera. Doing what we can, man. Hollywood. Doing what we can. Hollywood Seth. It's better than a lot of things. We got my buddy here. Roger in here with us now. We're in the uh, one of these hubs. It's pretty windy here today. Oh, that's a nice one. Don't lose my spoon! Whoa! I was hooking him in the jaw, buddy. Whoa. <laughs> that was like some epic gaffage there. Look at that thing. Hey, touch it, Rock. No. Come on, touch it. Let, let's slap your face. No, no. Come on, Rock. <laughs> nice job, son. That's a Cheers that 28 one. inch right there. All right, so at this point, we uh, decided to pack up and call it a night. Uh, we had way over 40 fish, so we were definitely uh, lined up for the burbot bath that was to come. And uh, we also got a phone call from a fellow fisherman who had broken down. And uh, conditions were not very nice, so we decided that we would uh, go assist him and make sure everybody made it back safely uh, to the house. So stick around. Uh, here's uh, what happens when your snowmobile spits a track at uh, you know, 70 miles an hour. All right, so we uh, had a little um, malfunction, would you call that? Yeah, I had it wide open coming back, and she just blew apart. It was pretty loud, but it's my first track that broke. <laughs> Won't be your last. Nope. You want to feel that? Is that perfect? All right, so when you run your mouth a little bit at walleye camp and say you're going to do a burbot bath, that's what you got to do. Yeah? Yeah. So once again, uh, up here at Burt Lake, catching burbot. That's a bad thought. I thought you'd around. What? Hold <laughs> you back there together. That's gonna be a part. That's a tight squeeze. There. Hurry up, Seth! Hurry up! <laughs> <laughs> there. All right, everybody, start grabbing him. Hold on. Yeah. Seth, hurry up! 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 Hurry
<laughs> Welcome to the 48 right, Burbot Bath. Get your hands up. Cheers. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's kind of cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Burbot fishing on Burt Lake. Successful, I will say. Uh, stay tuned, we're going to clean these up and we're going to do a little recipe for you. But we're going to go drink some beer, because that's what we do. I got 30 already right now. Not the prettiest thing you've ever seen. Not at all, but they taste delicious. And uh, we, we cleaned a whole bunch of them the other day, and I thought there's not a lot of videos on how to clean a burbot, so we're just going to make a quick video. This is how we did it. I'm not saying that we're experts, but we cleaned like 40, 40. of them in probably less than an hour. So it was pretty good, but we had like six guys doing it. So we had two stations. It was most of our first time ever cleaning bourbon. Yeah, so. it was definitely an experiment. So this is what we came <laughs> up with. So uh, here we go. Knife. Oh, and Seth did take a shower since you last saw him. Yes, since the bourbon shower, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so all we're going to do is cut the skin um, all the way around. And then Seth's gonna grab hold, or I'm gonna grab hold. Or here, I'll, let's flip. Somebody around. will grab hold, and all we do is pull on the skin and pull it back. And it looks like I missed. There we go. And then we just work, work the skin back this way. Um, really, once you get about halfway, it just all pulls right off. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Well, it usually came off a lot easier than that. But anyways, now we have a skinless fish. And... All you're looking to do is take this loin on both sides and the two tail pieces. And we found that just a small fillet knife seemed to work about as good as anything did. Um, so you're looking at the anal vent, so right about there, and you're just filleting right down that, that tail, and you get a tail piece. And you get one of these from each side. So I'll flip it over this way, and we'll get the other one. And then there's a back loin on each side, so I just cut kind of right down the side of the backbone until I rub on those ribs. Really similar to taking the loin out of a deer. It really it is. It's how I figured almost that part this, out. Yeah, almost the exact same way. And you just follow that up. Careful of the bones, there are bones in there just yep. a little bit. And there and there. And you get one of these lines from each side. I still got a little bone right here where I missed. But that's about it. Flip it over, repeat. Do that on here. Cut down to that rib, follow it up, follow it up. I tell you what. We probably are going to cook some up and show you, but we have cooked some up, and it's really, really good. It's fantastic. And uh, a couple different ways. The guys from the trip did it. Uh, some guys boiled it in uh, wa water and 7-Up, or water and Sprite, mm -hmm. and then dipped it in butter. They call it poor man's lobster. Very good that way. And then um, we're actually going to deep fry some up tonight. 
So there's your meat, there's your carcass, there's your burbot. So uh, if you are lucky enough to live somewhere where these are, uh, go out, you know, this time of year, it's like uh, late February, early March, you're in kind of spawning mode, and you can find them on, on uh, kind of like uh, mid-depth reefs, reefs uh, flats, and usually right off the edge of deep water. That's where we were finding them. Very similar to where, we, where you would find perch. Mm -hmm. And uh, i tell you what, they're a hoot to catch. So, Well, and they're an indicator of really good water quality too. Yep, Not they, a lot of people understand that. Yep, so it's a good, a good, actually good to find these in your lake. They're a native species. They're found all over through Canada and Alaska and in good, clean, clear water. Mm -hmm. So good to see them and uh, good to eat them too. Even better. All Let's right. Eat. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon.